and he attacks, and God's ready to break the back of the enemy. He's ready to bring you forth into victory. He's ready to say to you, nothing is impossible with God. Listen, this is going to be a great live service. We're going to release the anointing. Breakthroughs are going to take place. The phone lines are open. It's Dial that toll-free number right now. We have anointed pastors, Pastor Reuben, and the prophetic warriors are standing by, ready to take your call, and we are ready to agree with you. There's power in agreement. So many of you want to know what's going to happen in America. Well, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in America tomorrow night. It's going to be prophetic perspective. We're going to lead the church into breakthrough. We're not going to be disdained, dismay. Uh, I had another dream of the... This, this president, you know, even the Roe versus Wade, that was prophesied how, how here. How amazing. Here, is it was that prophesied. Word. I remember. Even on Sid Roth. That's right. I remember it on Sid uh, Roth. I remember in Texas, yeah. underneath R.W. Shambox yeah. tent, we were sitting there, yeah. and you were in your American fl uh, flag sackcloth, and you said, and you were talking about prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. And one of them that stood out above all, because everybody was talking about right. it, was when you prophesied, and Roe versus Wade in this country will come to an end. Yeah. And here we are in 2022 right. seeing the miraculous change in of something versus, that Christians yeah. have been praying for for a long, um, long time. You know, you can't give up and when you pray and it doesn't happen immediately. Come on, man. Talk, you, that's you, right. You, you can't stop and throw in town and say, you know what? God is angry with me. God hates me. If he, if, <laughs> if he didn't hate me, why is this prayer not been answered? That's right. You got to keep plowing. Until you get into your inheritance, Amen. until you get into that open door under open heaven. And there's many challenges before you and that open heaven. That's right. There's many b mountains. There's some valleys. You know, we sung this. Uh, they're going on to be with the Lord now, but um, through it all. Through it all. Diane would always <laughs> sing, through it all. I've been a lot of places. That's right. I've seen a lot of faces. But in the middle of all that, through it all. Come on. Through every single thing. You know, the word of God says in James chapter 1, count it all joy. Amen. Well, you know, when you fall into diversities of uh, uh, various trials and tribulation. So we want to minister to you. Pastor Mike and myself right now standing by with our pastor prophetic warriors. Go to the phone right now. Let us know how we can pray for you. Uh, cancer is dying right now. That's anointing to move the spirit of cancer. That's a lady that you're washing on the side of uh, your... your uh, Left lungs is uh, cancer, and God's healing that cancer right now. That cancer is going to die. That lip nose is going to be dissolved. God's going to give you a miracle right now. I want you to go to your phones right now. Let us know how we can pray with you, pray for you, and what time zone you in because, you know, we got partners from Hong Kong, the U.K., Japan, uh, Australia, all, really all around the world. But listen, there's something that God is going to unfold even greater when we look at oh, Roe versus Wade. You know, uh, you know, even today I was filling up the car. Mm -hmm. I, I've never had to fill the car up seventy five dollars. <laughs> you know. Now listen now. For those of you who don't know, he has a small car. <laughs> it, <you laughs> so seventy five dollars is crazy. I can't believe it. Seventy five dollars. I said, "Where's Trump at?" Man, listen you know, to me. we might not agree with all of his ways, <laughs> but gas was a dollar and fifty nine cents. The economy was definitely a little better. <laughs> it was you know, a better now condition. it's like, <laughs> God bless you in California. It's about six, seven dollars a gallon oh, now. Amen. It is crazy. Come on. You can thank your president, uh, not mine, but yours. <laughs> 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 but I got something to tell you tomorrow night concerning him in this present amen. administration. And I'm not knocking leaders. You know, we have to pray for those. We have done that so many times in this ministry, whether it's been George Bush or Barack Obama, Trump, or whoever else in office. That's you right. have to pray for those, and that's our, that's our solemn um, responsibility as Absolutely. leaders. Absolutely. It's not to pick by choices, but to pick by principles that's right. and realize that God pulls down and sets up. So let's talk about Joshua. Now, this is significant because you're the Joshua and I'm the Moses. Amen. Uh, you, you matter of fact, there was several years ago, I still got this photo. Uh, we would rollerblading. Do you remember that? I remember that. And you, and I, I, I got hurt or something. You had picked me up and carried me. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. He's the Joshua. You know, and you know, thank God for the Joshua because it, the Moses generation, and I can speak this as a leader for 30 years of ministry four times around the world, mm -hmm. there, there's something that the Moses generation misses that the Joshua generation picks up. 
But let's talk about Joshua, how he takes on the different spirit, but yet he leads the nation Israel as warriors, mm -hmm. but he leads them into their inheritance where Moses brought them to a place that Moses said, you know, eventually I'm coming to my own understanding that I'm out of human strength. Right. So let's talk about how we can help our audience today, our partners and friends, how to enter in to a covenant relationship, get into their inheritance, because without a shadow of doubt, witchcraft is real. Oh, come on now. That's now, right. We Absolutely. have another book, uh, Mike and myself have another book called uh, The Bedchamber Jezebel. We both wrote that book together, and it, it'll be out this year. Also, to uh, The Healing Hands of Jesus. So many people, they Amen. want to know how to receive that healing, how to keep their miracles. And there's no, there's no other way. You know, you can get healing, revival, and lose it time you get in your car. But this is true. You can, people don't realize that. They don't realize. It. Then you want to call the prophet false, the healing evangelist false. But it's responsibility it's just to lie on the gift or the minister. That's right. It lies on both parties. Absolutely. It's you called know? a working of the faith for a reason. It does. It has to be, faith has to be the anatomy to Absolutely. bring it to a, a, the full manifestation That's of right. it. So we're going to teach you, it's called the Healing Hands of Jesus. And that book is going to be available as well as the Bed Chamber of Jezebel because we want to teach you how to come to one of our revivals or come to one of our School of the Prophets and our meetings and how to keep what you've been seeking God for. Man, you, know? you mentioned the School of the Prophets. How about this last School of the Prophets we had? And I'm going to tell you right now, if you had not been at the last School of the Prophets, oh, man, what a tremendous blessing you missed. It was so amazing yeah. how God moved and the Spirit of the Lord was poured out. Everybody was, we had the entire office here slam packed full of people. You know. We had people online watching. It was it was amazing. It was blessing. And the reason that we started the School of Prophets in the first place right. was because we wanted to teach the end time body of Christ to prepare them for the last great revival for the second coming of Jesus. And that was what the purpose of the Elijah Training Center was to raise up prophets in the last remnant in these last days. And that's what it needs. That you know, uh, Dr. Bill Hammett, I was just with him mm -hmm. in a meeting, and we had some private time that breakfast before he left. Right. And he was telling me, he said, um, he said Tracy, I, I have such a burden for you. He said, because my heart is full of the prophets. Amen. And whatever I can do to help you take the two. You know, my first book I was ever given by Annie Norman. Annie Norman. You remember her? I do. My first I do. book I was ever given was Bill Hammett, Prophets and Pitfalls. I remember that. And I thought, wow, you know, 30 years later, <laughs> I'm in meetings with him. That's you right. know, so don't give up on prophecy. Don't give up Come on, on prayer. That's you know, right. it, it, it took 30 years to lapse, but God brought me to the modern father of the prophetic movement. That's now, right. you have Oral Roberts, the healing move of God, or Kenny Copeland, the faith move of God. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's known to be that father of the modern day prophetic move of God. Absolutely. And, you know, it's, his wisdom is just profound as you know, we, we've been so blessed, but let's talk about, let me read several verses and then we're going to elaborate on this because we want you to go to your phones and pray right now. We're praying for you. Go to your phones, dial that toll free number, turn in your prayer request. Let us know how we can pray. We, we'll read those uh, prayer requests off in just a few minutes. Now let's go to Joshua chapter one. Joshua, it, to me, is one of the greatest books in the Bible, one of the greatest characters because he, he moves in the rim that uh, I don't think Moses realized it because Moses was concentrated on the burden of so many needs that he didn't focus on equipping them how to That's right. overcome their needs. That's right. He was just so burdened by the needs of the people that he failed to realize that you got you got to prepare people. You got to reproduce. That's right. Absolutely. You got to be able to take this message and carry it to the next generation. Are you simply, you're going to burn out and you're going to get so fatigued because we have been there in ministry. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. We've been to that place of spiritual burnout. That's right. We've been to that place. You know, we're real. You know, we're transparent. You know, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> None of, listen, ain't, there's no giant, and I'm not name calling tonight, but there's no one in ministry that has not been tested with spiritual burnout. Not a single one. Uh, not one of them. Let's read the book of Joshua. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, said, Can you imagine this? I would hate to be in the place of saying, All right, here is Moses, but now how do I take the torch and the baton? How do I build 
it from this place? Mm -hmm. How do I get a people to be prepared to be warriors and not wimps? Right. We're going to talk about that. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. The promises of God. We're going to talk about the second of all. Every word your foot touches, Come on. you are qualified to take. That's right. From the willingness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the lands of the Hittites, unto the great sea towards the going down the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to, listen to this, this is powerful. <laughs> there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so would I be with thee. I will not fail thee, Come on. nor will I forsake thee. Be strong, be of good courage. He, he, listen, he is so profound. Pastor David, he tells us, first and foremost, now Moses at this time has departed. God has hid him. He looks over the mountain, mm -hmm. sees the promised land, unable to go into it for particular reasons. Mm -hmm. Now Joshua is to a place of saying, I no longer have the shoulders of the arm of Moses to lean on. Now I'm qualifying to take these people into their promise but now I've got to prepare them how to be warriors and not wimps. That's right. He's got to prepare a generation that I think Moses, in my personal opinion, you know, this is just opinions. Mm -hmm. uh, well, not so much in my opinion of my 30 years of studying this character. Right. Uh, not so much opinion, but studying this one character. Moses has an illustrious beginning. Mm -hmm. He's sent in the now at uh, three months of age. God takes him down the river as an infinite child, separated from Yoshebel, his mother. Mm -hmm. But now the daughter of Pharaoh is raising him in the finest courtyards of Egypt. He raised up in all of the facility the knowledge of all the Egypt's background, you know, their history, tradition, That's genealogy, right. only to prepare God's people for deliverance and a way out of a hardship, out of a way that is a desert that is scorned, every single day by whips, by taskmasters, only to find himself operating in the flesh, mm -hmm. high as a servant of the Egyptian army, buries a man, now he's a fugitive on the backside of the desert. He comes to the burning bush experiences, and God has to deal with the nature of who Moses is. And yet, even in all of that, signs and wonders and miracles, and now he falls into the place where he relapses into a place of being fatigued and burned out because of the needs of the people. And now he finds himself on the mountain, looking at the horizon. He sees the promise of God. I can only imagine that Moses is thinking, you know what? It was finally worth this journey. Absolutely. Even though I can't go to the next step or the next level, at least I've got a trusted soldier in place right. that can take the people, prepare them, equip them for the needs to be met. That's right. Now, in the life of Joshua... Because it's so much comparison between Joshua and Moses, you and I. No. Now, notice this. The Lord spoke to me, according as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only, Lord, be thy God with thee as he was with Moses. So, he, Joshua, how do you see Joshua and Moses, first of all, in order to prepare them, equip them into their inheritance? How do you see and view Joshua and Moses as compound ministries and the anointing? And then we're going to call some of these prayer requests out and pray. What, I, what, what amazes me is when we first, we got ready to start the broadcast tonight. You know, I know you, the Lord has spoke to you about dealing with transitions. Right. What is amazing to me is dealing with Moses' life first. There were so many transitional uh, periods in his life. Right. If, you, if anybody had looked at Moses from a normal standpoint, they'd be like, there is no way God's going to use that man. Absolutely. Impossibility. Right. But God took somebody who was a nobody and made him a somebody to deliver his people out of Egypt. He took this man, this ordinary man, made him an extraordinary man through transitional phases in his yep. life, right? Just so he can transition from that headship down to the sonship of Joshua. That's right. So he transitioned the power back to Joshua, who took the mantle from Moses and led the people of Israel into, like you said, a spirit of warrior. 
you know, from moving from wimps into warriors. Absolutely. And that's the thing. It's like we had taught in Elijah Training Center. I had done the section on David. Right now, I know there's some of you that are sitting there watching, and you're Absolutely. in a position of pain and hurt, right? But it's your zigzag period. Yeah. That's your place of transition. That's Just right. like Prophet Tracy said earlier, it is That's your right. place of transition from moving from a place of pain into a place of kingship. That's right. And that's the difference between Moses and Joshua. It was a transitional period that's right. of transitioning Israel that's right. from a place of nothingness into a country that honored God. Absolutely. You know, the, the thing about this is that Joshua is the generation that prepares to me, I believe it's the John, Joshua generation that's going to be affected Amen. in this uh, last hour. Oh, absolutely. Because they have the audacity, their shoulders are square, their focus is sharp. They are pursuing. You know, what's phenomenal about Joshua, so many times I've studied on Moses. Mm -hmm. God took Moses at the Red Sea and the staff, he had to raise it. Then the waters departed from the right and the left. That's right. Joshua is Joshua. challenged different. That's absolutely right. He has to take the ark before him mm -hmm. and wade through the water. Then set out 12 stones as the ark is gone before him. Man, that is so powerful. You know, and I thought about it. Then he lifted up the staff, and then the waters went to the left and right. And I thought about it. God's not going to do this last move of God like he did in the, uh, the first beginning. That's right. He, he's not going, this move of God is not going to be like, and, you know, thank God. And you can see the books behind him. We love the God's generals. We, oh, we've been with several of them. Absolutely. But this move of God cannot be like anything else that's ever occurred. Come on. If we're really going to move the earth as we know it, then it has to be something that has not been discovered yet. That's right. We've, we've had the faith movement, the charismatic movement. We've had oh, the prophetic man. movement, the apostolic movement. We've had the... Uh, Youth movement, mm -hmm. you know, all yeah. the youth is falling, flooding the whatever, you know. Absolutely. Uh, change in the, the nature, the custom of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess there's so many prophetic words gave me, God gave me, but the one that was said on Sid Roth before the virus hit, uh, in the next four months, everything could be shaken, would be shaken, and the landscape of the church would be forever changed. Change. I did not realize the impact. Oh, man. We only had like two minutes to prepare for a video mm -hmm. to speak pro prophetically. Each, each one of the prophets had two minutes. I had no idea that in that two-minute segment, the church, the landscape of church be forever changed. And it has been. And, it, you know, it's hard for me to adapt. <laughs> it really is, you know. I, I'm a revivalist. See, that's Amen. the Moses mentality. Yep. We, we, we do a certain way and we don't want to shift. That's right. We do things. A, a revivalist has a mentality. No, no. Uh, you know, uh, I want to do it the same way that A. Allen did it or mm -hmm. Shambach did it. I want to. It, and it's different today. It is. Absolutely. The, the landscape of the church is different. So Joshua, he has to take on this uh, new strategy. You know what? How do I get the people convinced? How do I get them to get in Harrison where where they dismantle the powers of witchcraft, where they walk in absolute victory? Because Moses carried the burdens. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Moses always lifted up the staff, or he was smiking the rock. But Joshua had to teach him, no, you can't burn me out like you burnt Moses out. That's right. We got to teach you how to be warriors. Mm -hmm. We got to teach you how to fight. We got to teach you how to put on the armor, take the sword, and start defending yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And Absolutely. I think that's weakness in the life of the, of the prophets, mm -hmm. the weakness of that character. And this is why I love Elijah Training Center. It's been one of my greatest desires. And finally, we're coming to a place oh, now man. after 27 years of teaching the prophets, uh, we, we've got an opportunity to teach so many students. Oh, absolutely. Because one thing I do know, and this is not an arrogant statement, there is not much in the prophetic today that's out there that teaches you how to be a whole man. No, it doesn't. No, it it's doesn't. not. It's not there how to really teach you how to hear the voice of the Lord, Come on. how to walk in the nine gifts of the spirit. That's right. How to be effective in the prophetic, mm -hmm. learn how to demonstrate the prophetic. It's, it's not a lot of it's not out there. And it's not it, the teachings. And, and again, you know, you and I have been doing ministry for 30 years. 
and this is not knocking on anybody's teaching by no means. I, I, I listen to just about right. everybody, you know. I, but the teachings today, there's a lot of missing ingredients. There is. A lot of holes. That's right. To create, as you said, the whole man. Right. Because the problem lies in the fact that, okay, I can sit there and say, you know, there's the mantle, take it and run with it. But if you haven't been trained and taught how to operate and handle that mantle, you will fall on your face and find yourself under a juniper tree saying, where is God at? Yeah, you will. And it's, it's sad, you know, because, again, as you said, part of the Elijah Training Center, the reason we started was is to try to train up whole individuals on how to walk circumspectingly in the spirit of God, but have that balance like Joshua was saying. Right. You know, the thing about Joshua that, that, that the Lord was speaking to me about was when he transit when Moses transitioned from in power to Joshua being in power. If you notice, Mo, Joshua tried to do the exact same methods that Moses did, yep. but the, mo, the the methods that worked for Moses didn't work for Joshua, and that I think is part of the problem with the body of Christ today. Right. Is the fact that we're still trying to carry on the same old wine skin without realizing the character that God created us to be as an individual, Absolutely. and that's the problem. People today are forgetting. Right, that they have to learn who they are as an individual in God, not right. as who their neighbor is or who their pastor is or who their Sunday school teacher is, but who are they in God themselves. Absolutely. And it's so important. You know, you can find yourself, because I've did this so many times, you can find yourself in a powerful anointing but never change it. Jack Cole Jr. said this to me one time because I was so, you know, he's, I always seen him in a suit and tie right. and everything That's else. That's right. Then he, he came to, you remember he came to the revival wearing his Harley shirt. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and one day in Texas, he told me, he said, Brother Tracy, have you ever gone fishing? I said, yes, sir. He said, um, <laughs> you, if you don't start catching fish with the bait you're using, oh, come it's, on. it's not the fishing pole problem. Man, that is powerful. You, you have to change your baits. That's powerful. But you still got the same rod. That's right. But you got to change your base. He said, I want to keep up with today's, how the church is. Absolutely. And he said, my father was an old Pentecostal tent revivalist, but that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. Even though he done a lot of revivals and whatnot, you know, uh, I can't see his dad uh, preaching on the iPad, but he did, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. But it tells you how things have really changed over the years. Yeah. And I never forgot that we in his living room, he said, uh, after I saw so many pictures and magazines of his father and himself, and he said, uh, if you don't learn to change with the times, you'll find yourself doing the same things over and over, and it's Absolutely. just old and repeated. It's old and repeated. You know, and then he, he gave me so much wisdom in other parts of, of ministry as well. But I thought about that as we're on this teacher. Right now, we want to pray with you and grieve God. Patricia in Connecticut, we're going to break those bad spirit witchcraft. This is, uh, we had this book offered tonight as well, Dismantle the Powers of Witchcraft of the Press. We want you to get it, put it in your hands, Amen. spiritual tax in your home. Patty from California, we believe in God for your brother Jerry, the financial uh, business Hallelujah. to begin to manifest. Uh, Carla from Nigeria, God bless you, all the way from Nigeria. We're going to believe for finance, marriage, and business. God to move Ashley from uh, California, cancer. Uh, I saw cancer earlier and started this. God's breaking the spirit of cancer. If you know someone who's been diagnosed with cancer, tumors, I want you to get them right now. Let them see this live broadcast because they're going to get a miracle. We've seen more miracles of cancer than any other. Uh, it's amazing to me. So call in right now. Pastor, I know you have some testimonies and prayer oh, requests man, as absolutely. well. Absolutely. Rosalina said she'd pray for her. She's underneath getting ready to be evicted and she needs a job, but we're believing that God is going to bring a breakthrough on that. Uh, Henry has court on the 25th of this month and is praying for a turnaround situation in that. And, man, how many times have we seen people? Oh, man. <laughs> we, we, we've seen God, you know, we've seen God just move one judge out of the way and bring another judge in and overthrow the cases. And That's right. We even seen some, some people there. It was just impossible for them to come out of situation. Then all of a sudden the thing was reversed. That's right. Absolutely. God can reverse. That's, called, that's just what we call in school the prophet, prophetic per, uh, reversal. Mm -hmm. When God changes his mind. Towards a healing testimony. Uh, 
being healed at the Rock Church, you call for someone hurting their side and hip, and that was me. I went to the altar as you instructed, and God Almighty could see me in the fire of his presence. I could barely walk back to my seat, and all the pain was gone in my right side where I had surgery years ago. We just came out. Uh, my father, I, I remember this name. The Lord had told me people would come out that morning. Mm-hmm. You know, Listen, miracles are real. Healing is real. Amen. But listen, we want to teach you how to break that generation curse, how to dismantle the powers of darkness. Call in right now your prayer requests or your testimonies, and we'll read it live over the air. Amen. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. We get ready to take a, a phone call in just a few seconds, but before we do that, let me elaborate on three things that's going to help you tonight. Number one, realize the old, recognize the new. That's right. Realize the old, how it was beneficial in your life, how it taught you certain uh, steps of your way, how it, it really, you know, the old is not bad. That's right. It did give you a foundation. Mm-hmm. It did build you, with, it becomes stepping, uh, like stepping stones, right. building blocks, mm-hmm. in other words. But now, what we got to recognize is the new. Yeah. Behold, I'll do a new thing. Shall you not know Come it? On. Shall it not spring up? Nothing new can spring up if we're not willing to let go of the old. Exactly. Whatever we're willing to walk away from, we can have our miracle ministry. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're willing to walk away from, detach yourself. That's right. Then you could be attracted to the new. What is it? That's the first point we're talking about, Labyrinth, and then we're going to take phone calls, going to pray and talk more about this revelation. What do you think it is about the new that scares the body of Christ? Because the new has to take place. Absolutely. I it think, has to I be a part. What it is, honestly, is deep down human nature says that they're afraid of change. Yeah, change. That they're, is. That's they're true. afraid of change. You know, because you know how it is. When you get into a certain place, you get comfortable. Right. And when you're comfortable, right, you get to a spot to where, well, you expect this and you expect that. Right. And anything that shifts different, either A, it makes you uncomfortable. Right. B, we want to say, oh, well, that can't be God. Right. Right. Or C, we'll say, well, we'll buck against it. And we'll say, well, I'm not doing this. But what people, don't, what people forget is, is, is in that transition period, God could be doing a new thing in their life. Right. And they not know it and That's not right. be aware of it because they're so used to the way God was moving in their life. Right. But God's trying to take you out of that comfort zone. Let me tell you something. No plant grows in a comfort zone. That's true. It, it doesn't. It doesn't. And, it doesn't. and if we, when we learn to transition out of those comfort zones and actually open our minds and our box to what God can really do in our lives, and I think that's the problem, the issue, is that we have forgotten how big God really is in our lives. Absolutely. We, we have. You know, that man with me, uh, 1996, I was laying on the couch mm-hmm. in the mobile home trailer park, yep. and the Lord smacked me on the shoulder. Actually, the angel smacked me on the shoulder and the Lord walked in and he said, Tracy, I can only be as big as you allow me to be. Oh, man, I remember you telling me. Yep. I can only be as big as you allow me to be. Oh, come on. So we got to learn how to exit out of the old, go through the new, mm-hmm. but don't allow the new to take us to a place where our faith doesn't grow. That's right. Or our experience in God is not greater than what we should be Walk into a greater place, a greater purpose, and greatest identity, and greatest anointing. Oh, so we get ready to take a phone call, and we get ready to prophesy. So if you need to hear from the prophets tonight, do you need a prophetic word? Go to the phones right now and dial that toll-free number. We're getting ready to speak prophetically, answer the phone. Let us prophesy to you. Do you need to hear from God? Do you need a special word from heaven? Go right now to your phones, dial that toll-free number, Come on. and keep calling till you get through. Amen. Let's go ahead and take a call. Absolutely. Let's see here. And again, that phone number is 833-917-2799. 833-917-2799. God bless you. How are you doing? I am doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. Who am I talking to? Corey from Ohio. Corey from Ohio. God bless you. So how you been doing there in Ohio? Uh, I'm, I'm doing great. I've been waiting uh, on my promised land. I, I've known God talking about coming through at the last minute for me. I've been waiting on so many things. Um, and I'm believing for my mom to be healed from uh, schizophrenia. Absolutely. Listen, we're going to believe God for you. We've seen that miracle over the years in revival. So let me tell you something. There's nothing that God cannot do. 
We're going to pray with you. We're going to believe God. So what are you believing God for yourself personally? Then we're going to pray for your mother. What do you want God to do for you? I want uh, to know how to be able to serve. I know I'm being called uh, to be a, a pastor and uh, an armor bearer at my church, but I just want to know how to be a good servant. Uh, that's a big thing on my heart. Absolutely. You know, we have a mentoring program that we just started a few months ago, and now not, like every two weeks I'm personally mentoring people over the phone for 45 to, to an hour Amen. every two weeks. So it's my way of uh, giving back to the body of Christ, ever help the prophetic generation. So let me pray with you, with Pastor Mike. We're going to believe God for your merit. Father, in the name of Jesus, God. we ask that you touch this young man. We know that he's called. He has a shepherd's heart. Yes. And I hear the word of the Lord saying, even in the next 16 months, God's going to shape your life. He's preparing you. Even the attacks are around your shoulder blade, around your neck area, the, between the L1 to L2, God is going to touch you tonight. Thank and you, God, God told me to tell you that take the limits off of him. Take the limits off of him. The next 16 months, God's going to prepare you, make your vision plain, write it down. That's prophetic wisdom I would give to you. And God said, even what has been stolen from you in the last two years, you're getting ready to see God move like never Come before on. in your life. He's counseling out the plans of the enemy. We come against the spirit of fear that will try to cripple you as God's servant, <laughs> as a minister Come of the on. gospel. We bind, we annihilate, we pull down that stronghold that is trying to stop your advancement. We speak to the condition of your mother that should be healed by the power of Jesus. And we speak that prophetic word, and we want you to hold on to that prophetic word and realize the next 16 months you're going to see God shift you Come and on. move you and bring you to understanding. And even now between now, and what that means prophetically, between now and the 16 months, expect the unexpected. God I bless you. It. Thank you for loving this ministry. We appreciate you. God bless you. Go ahead and call right now that toll-free number. Are you waiting for a prophetic word? Do you need to hear Hallelujah. from heaven? Well, Pastor Mike, myself, as God's prophets, we're ready to speak to you. We're ready to Come minister on. to you, and we're ready for you to see God move. Are you ready to dismantle the powers of witchcraft? Are you ready to take hold the horns of the altars of God? Are you ready? To see God move. That's a lady named Karen. Karen, when you hear your name call out, God's going to give you a miracle. The attacks that you've been going through. That's a gentleman named uh, Juan. God's going to give you a miracle. The plans of the enemy is going to be broken. Yes, Lord. No, there's something about this is so powerful. Number one, step out the old, step into the new. Come now, on. as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. That's God's reassurance that you didn't call yourself. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> you know, we couldn't do this. I, I tell people all the time, if you're not called, this is not a profession you profession <laughs> you won't. I wouldn't know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, I do it because I love it and I love him. But it it has some of the greatest challenges. It does. It has some of the greatest attacks. You know, I'm literally living the Bible. When I say live the Bible, the tanks, the prosecution, the valley, the mountaintop, the identical experiences. But then you know what? You got to, it's like Jack Cole told me, he, he wrote this book, Faith That Takes a Licking But Keep On Ticking. Come on now. And he was telling that you, they hated his father so much mm -hmm. that uh, W.V. Grant Sr. and Jack Cole were real, Sr. were real good friends. I went, I, I saw, I went to their church and visited their homes. The different people live them, but mm -hmm. they allow me to go there, you know? That's awesome. And uh, Jack Cole was telling me that they hated his father so much because he challenged the agnostics. He challenged denominations. He challenged them because he would grab a hold of a, a tomb on the side of the face and it would fall. Come on, man. That's he would powerful. Throw people in the air out of the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. He was so bold in his faith, he would take wheel, wheels off the wheelchairs and they well, had to believe for a miracle or sit there without wheels. But he had so much faith that he took the wheels off the wheelchairs. <laughs> but his son told me they hated his father so much that uh, he got arrested there in Florida mm -hmm. for practicing medicine. It, he loved it. W.V. Grant um, uh, Sr. and uh, Gordon Lindsay went and go get him out of jail. He said, no, I'm going to stay right here. This is a free advertisement. <laughs> he stayed at, at your week because he wanted free advertisement. <laughs> That is awesome. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. Or that, Robert said he has the most bodacious faith uh, out of anybody he ever met. You know, but what the thing about this is, people would be laying in his yard three to four in the morning, 
laying in his yard in tents, pallets, waiting for him to get up to come out and lay hands on them. Wow. And it brought so much jealousy to big leaders, big time ministries, sure. that this is a true story. Very few people know, but it's a fact. They had a man dress up, going in Lindsay, W. Grant Sr. had this dream. A man walked into Jack Cole Sr. Hospital, an overcoat, took needles, poison into his body, and he was diagnosed with polio and died. Come on. At the age of 36, man. Wow. Died. Nobody couldn't. It was like a freak accident. What happened? Right. Now, very few that's really close to, yeah. you know, knew the real story. A lot of people just don't know it. Right. But imagine that you're so affected in the kingdom that the devil hates you that bad. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, there's backlashes too. That's true. This you know, true. it just ain't all roses, petals in the kingdom. Amen. You know, Moses went through a time of burnout, mm -hmm. uh, great attacks. But also Joshua had to come and prepare a legacy of army equipping people for miracles. That's right. So I know we have some more right now to just come in and read oh, those. Absolutely. We're going to be praying and prophesying. Do you need to hear from God? We're live here in Country Revival's Global Studio in Newburn, North Carolina. What are you waiting for? Your one phone call away from your miracle? This is Prophet Tracy Allen Cook, along with Prophet Michael Lee Cook, telling you that God has a miracle. Why don't you do something right now? Pick up that phone Come on. and let us help you get a miracle. Absolutely. This is a powerful testimony from Virginia Baker. So I want to give a testimony that uh, Prophet Tracy had said that her son was going to jail, and you said that the jail cell would be opened up and that her son would be set free from jail. Right? So he was sitting in custody, went before the judge. They were hoping that he wouldn't have to go before the judge. Went through the entire process, got before the judge. Right? When he got there, judge threw the entire case out and set the boy free. Wow. <laughs> hey, God's a God of Come miracles. Come on, man. You know, he got... Go ahead. I knew that. Oh, absolutely. Testimonies. Are you ready for your testimony? Are you ready for that test to be over, that attack to be Come over? On. The devil's not fighting you from where you're at, but where you're going, you're not past possess, your future possess. Right. We want to pray with you and pray for you. Go to your phones right now. It's a tremendous night. You're going to be blessed. I, I feel the anointing of oh, God. Hallelujah. You know, I really have a burden for the prophetic voice to get out there more. Amen. And nothing, we're going to tell you uh, about an upcoming announcement about Elijah Training Center mm -hmm. uh, next month, right? Next month. Next month. The last weekend. All right, but we got Mary Ann here. Mary Ann, uh, wow, I, I think uh, this is one of our judges that follows the ministry, Man Mary Ann Judge. She's a New yeah. York Supreme New Court York, judge. Yeah, New York Supreme. My, oh, yeah, she's a dare. God bless you, darling. Oh, we love you so much. Uh Two judges out of New York City God gave me so much favor with. I, I remember when a revival, God called out the name and everything and mm -hmm. heal a doctor. I mean, just matter of fact, we were talking to one of our partners yesterday that was, we was on the phone with him. He got, you know, let oh, me man, tell you that's something. that's a powerful testimony. The doctors, <laughs> nobody knew he had cancer in the church. Come on. God called his name out and told me he had cancer. I was in sackcloth. Uh, that garment is, I, I guess I just need to wear that garment and <laughs> just tell it, yes. everywhere <laughs> I go in revivals. That night I was in sackcloth and God told me he had cancer. I didn't know he had a doctor appointment the next day. He'd been having it for months and nobody knew it. It was bad. It was a generation curse in his family. And he was diagnosed with stage four cancer, getting ready to leave the earth. Wow. And uh, the Lord spoke to me telling me, he said, at 4 p.m., this time tomorrow. I had no idea. That it, it was, had to go to a doctor appointment. Yeah. He said, 4 p.m. tomorrow, angel going to walk in your bedroom. We're going to walk in the room because I see you going around the building. I, I couldn't understand it, but I saw him going around the building. Mm -hmm. Not realizing, the it's talking about the hospital. 4 p.m. exactly. The angel walks in. He feels the presence. He didn't see him, but he felt the presence because he said it was unusual presence. He was in the gown of the hospital, right? This was so miraculous. They came back, couldn't find the cancer. <laughs> but they didn't want, they, they couldn't release him. They said, do you have a, a designated driver? And he said, yes, but he didn't, right? right? And they said, well, we, we, can't, we don't need to hold you here because 
We can't find the cancer. That's right. Right? The doctor came in, astonished, the nurse come in. And do you know, he, God is my witness, he showed up in my revival that night with the hospital gown. Come on. I mean, he had, a pant, he had his regular clothes on, but he had the it. gown, right? He had the gown. And you know what I did? I took that gown, cut it in prayer cloths, mm -hmm. and we had people heal of cancer. Come on, man. He told that testimony, profound. Absolutely. God bless this man. Hallelujah. Heal him with cancer. So listen, God is ready to move. We're, we're believing for Mary Ann to move forward. The principalities, uh, you know, and those, we're not going to elaborate so much because we realize that uh, we learned with presidents. I, I learned when I got locked up at, at the embassy there in Trinidad three hours for open my mouth and, you know, <laughs> everything that God showed me was true. But then this season you speak something you don't, you know, so you learn. But we're praying with you. Everything's going to have favor in America, in the courts. God's angels be with you. Mandy and Rodney from Georgia. Uh, husband's in jail. Let's believe God right now. Father, give yes, him Lord. a miracle. Unlock that will send the angel just like you did with Peter. Yes, Break Lord. the shackles off. God, we speak. Give him wisdom. Give him, Lord, move in the mighty name uh, of Jesus. Yes, Linda and from Georgia. Attack against her body. We break the sickness. We come against the symptom of COVID. Georgia uh, from Texas. We believe for your, your nervous system, disease should be gone. The power of healing to manifest. Rodney Stewart from California. I'm believing for a prophetic uh, word over your life right now. And the Lord told me to tell Rodney you're watching from California. What you're going through right now shall not possess you in the next 12 weeks. God's getting ready to cause you to have an open door. And God's going to begin to bring healing in the areas of uh, uh, your personal life. And you're going to see a turnaround where you, the door that you were denied from you're going to have a miracle. Matter of fact, later, somebody watching right now, you work in a gas station and you've been believing God. Say, Lord, you know, I want to get out of this position. Well, God's going to move you from that position. But what he's going to do, he's going to make you a businessman, an entrepreneur. And then you're going to have a gas station you're going to own. Watch this miracle. And don't think it's strange because we, we've had the, the family member who owns a racetrack gas That's station right. come personally to our revival. Absolutely. You know, he was astounded, man. I mean, astounded. Amen. So Amen. nothing's impossible with God. Absolutely. What you have over there, Pastor? Oh, man, this is powerful. This uh, Vicki Scherter wrote out a testimony to us. She said, approximately three weeks ago, I was sending every prayer request by, asking, by email asking Cook Ministries to uh, agree with me in Jesus' name. There was biopsies from a large nodule on her thyroid, and they were, wow. wor they were worried about it being cancer. Right? The doctor took six biopsies and looked at her and said, this looks bad. Wow. She immediately called the prayer line and asked for prayer. The biopsies came back negative. Testimony. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's powerful. I'm telling you. It is powerful. God told Moses to raise up Joshua. Now Joshua is coming to the forefront of what God has ordained and called for him. Now God gives him number two. God will give you reassurance. Whatever God has asked you to do, Absolutely. whom God called, he, he equips. God will give you the assurance. Amen. Now, you may learn through pitfalls. You may learn through uh, trials, tribulation, uh, many valleys. Listen, you're not exempt from them. But what they do do, they make preparation for you for greatness. Amen. They bring out greatness. They bring the anointing out of you. Absolutely. They make you smell the oil that's on your life. Smell me, baby. I got oil Come on me. <laughs> so, number two. In the book of Joshua, it teaches us that God reassures us for what he's called us to do for many are called, but few are chosen. That's right. So if God has called you to be a part of a ministry, why don't you let us help you mentor you each month? You can learn how to uh, sign up the mentor program every month. You'll get a personal phone call from myself as well as uh, Pastor Mike every two weeks. Amen. We'll teach you, train you for 30 years. You know, Warren Buffett said this, and even Mike Murdoch said this. Mike Murdoch bought all these books, and people are trying to figure out why. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, That's why he called mm -hmm. it the Wisdom Center. I mean. Why? Because he said, I'm going to learn in three hours what took them 20, 30 years. That's exactly right. I don't right. mind paying hundreds of dollars for their books. Uh, I don't mind. Mm -mm. Because their knowledge and their experience will help me to alleviate what I'm going through. That's right. You know? Absolutely. Uh, and Mike Murdoch, bless his heart, we're praying for him. Tremendous man of wisdom. God, I, I think God... Outside of the kingdom, something gave that man a gift of wisdom. Amen. There's nothing like understanding God is with you. Amen. 
you know, if God be for you, who can be against you? That's right. There's some attacks that I never thought I would go through, some things I never thought I would ever experience in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. But I realize you can't get to the next level until there's something else that you really don't want to face or go through, Absolutely. you know, out of the bed of afflictions. But one thing I, I do know this is like the Apostle Paul said, my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. And you learn that God shapes the course and destiny of your life because one thing, and I don't say this ugly by no means, I have a heart for God's people. Everybody knows that. But you can't fool me when it comes to a real move of God. Man, let me talk about that now. You, you can't. You, you can advertise it. You can market it. Mm -hmm. You can do all the great but, singers. And that's not negative. This is not happening right now. And it's not. That's it's, to being it's, honest. It's, it's that's, not. That's real. It's not. It's not. Yes, it's a, we're in the third great awakening. Amen. And that's true prophetically. Mm -hmm. But if you know anything about prophetic, Come on. you know, it doesn't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. If we are in the very beginning stages of that third awakening. And it, the, what happens is an awakening takes a shaking first. It takes a shaking. Absolutely. It takes a shaking in order to have awakening. And, you know, and one thing I love is a move of God. Absolutely. And I've had to learn how to change my mindset because, you know, my mindset was strong. Mm -hmm. I was like, God, the only way God can bring revival is through a tent. <laughs> this you know? is true. <laughs> and Or Roberts had, you know, I am married Or Roberts for the simple fact. That, you know, what, what astounds me about Or Roberts is the fact that he's a healing evangelist, builds a prayer tower and a medical school, mm -hmm. has doctors in his, under him, and he drops a tent after 12 years of tent revivals, never picked up another one. That's right. And, I, and then goes and start building a universe mm -hmm. to educate the student to be a whole person. That's right. And I was thinking, what a great lesson to learn from a man like that. Amen. you got to shift your hands. You have to shift. And some of you today, it's not that God is angry with you. You're frustrated with your ministry. You're frustrated in the direction it's going. How about you ask God, is he ready to change the bait? Come on. What is that saying that you did that quote? Uh, same message. It was uh, same message, but different. What was it? One voice, but many messages. And, you know, and it is. But you've got to be able to. It's that diversity of sound. That's right. But Absolutely. that message, Christ is a healer. He is a deliverer. Absolutely. He is a provider. But we got to do our parts, too. Amen. Now, God will read number two in this teaching. God will reassure you that he's with you. Mm -hmm. He will give you evidence. But then he's not going to do you like he did Moses. That's right. Your faith has to go to another level. That's absolutely Your right. challenges are going to be greater. Joshua had greater challenges than Moses did. Absolutely. He had to prepare. But one thing he did do that was wonderful and was awesome, but he prepared warriors. Mm -hmm. If we're going to win this battle, we got to have warriors. Absolutely. You oh, got to have kingdom partners. Oh, man. Now, this brings me to this place. And we'll tell you about it around uh, in the next several minutes. But right now, number two, God will reassure you anytime he's called you. Now, there's been several times I wanted to run away from this call. <laughs> and you know what? If anybody was to be honest, they would yeah. all say the same thing. There's no way on earth you're going to go through this. If you're skating by and you're calling, I, I question your calling. Yeah. Honestly. You know, it's, there's many times I would say, Lord, you know, that's got to be a better way. <laughs> How can you love God's people, serve God's people? You're a prophet. And then, you know, it's like the next second, the stones are being thrown. That's right. And the more you help people, the more it seems they're ungrateful. This is so true. And I'm thinking, you know, why? But then you realize this. If they can ask for Barabbas to be released. There you go. Who was a murderer. That's right. Instead of Christ, who was a deliverer. That's right. How much more in this day? Because now this is a fact. Now, you're a student of Revelation, you know, far well, greater than I do. But evil has got to intensify 
Oh, before it's all said and done. Oh, absolutely. So now it's beyond homosexuality. I mean, you know, people are so caught up in that. It's beyond oh, homosexuality. <laughs> That's just the icing on the cake. It's beyond lesbianism. Look what he's doing to the church. And that's the problem. And you know what the thing is? I, I feel with all my heart that the body of Christ has gotten so caught up in the political issues of the land today that they have forgotten to take the own, their beam out of their own eye. Absolutely. And that's the issue. That is what's the, If you want to know what's stopping a new move of God today, why, why are not people lining up on people's yards today in cots and tents? That's waiting? right. Right. The, the same power of God that was then is still here. He hasn't left. God doesn't change. I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. The power of God is still the exact same, still resting on this earth. The problem lies is we get caught up in so much other stuff and other noise around us that we forget to get back into the anointing, yeah. it takes sacrifice. It yeah. takes setting aside time. It, it takes pushing away that plate. It takes actually eliminating the noise in your life so you can hear the voice of God again. You know, one of the things, my, my confession last year, I was in Florida seeking the Lord in Cyclone. And the Lord spoke to me. Just, I don't think I even shared this with you. First time I really shared this. I saw myself standing on this balcony in uh, different parts of the world. And I was seeing with fire and revivals breaking out. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, I really want to reach your people. Right. I really want to reach them and help get their needs met. And the Lord spoke to me just to clear. He said, Tracy, I'm not calling you. Come on, man. I'm calling you to be a prophet. That's right. He said, as long as people think you're a celebrity, you can't be my prophet. That's right. And, you know, I, it, it took me some time to swallow that. Yeah. Bless your ministry. Mm -hmm. But then you become a celebrity. Amen. And you fail to realize you're the mouthpiece. That's and exactly the problem right. with God's prophets today, we're not called to be celebrities. No. Not at all. Appeal to man. That's right. That's absolutely right. Let me tell you something. And, and this... This is the thing, because I ran into so many ministers. They said, I wish I can get on this network. I wish I can get on this platform. And I told them, honestly, I said, no, you don't. What you want to do is to make sure that the Lord Jesus Christ is pleased. What you want, when you lay your head down upon that pillow and you close your eyes, you got peace, and the Lord's with you, and that you're doing what God asked you to do. Amen. There's so many that I've been involved with, that I've learned from. But one of them has impacted my life. I guess outside of Sam, but it had to be Charles Young mm -hmm. that has impacted me more than any oh, other man. man of God. The days of celebrity was there. Mm -hmm. But then he told me, he said, Tracy, that's not it. No. And then he fell in love with revival again. He, he felt this little grandmother in this house that was God walking up with revival, wind up building her new house and buying both on, two Kyle So you got to find that ingredient that works for you. That's exactly right. You have to find that ingredient. It's like Bill Hammett told me, he said this, we're sitting down eating breakfast. In order to be effective in the prophetic, you got to have all the right ingredients. That's right. You can't bake a cake if you don't have eggs. Come on. Can't do it. That's exactly right. You've got to have all the ingredients in order to dismantle. So we want to help you. Go to your phones. We'll get ready to take another phone call and prophesy. Do you need to hear from heaven? Are you waiting for a prophetic word? Well, this is Prophet Tracy along with Prophet Michael tonight, live at Cook's Revival Hallelujah. Global Studio. Call right now. God's going to give you miracles. And you know what? I was praying for a Brother Alfred the other day. Mm. I feel, I feel it now. <laughs> I saw him have a new skin. I don't even understand it. Come on. I saw, you know, like you see mm -hmm. from cancer. Yes. I saw baby skin grow. Come on. And I saw his blood was just as pure like a river. Hallelujah. And God blessed him. And I feel the anointing, ah, a miracle. God. with cancer right now we curse it yes, we God. bind cancer tumors Hallelujah. lip nose 
We bind tumors and yes. cancer right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We command that Thank disease, you, new white cell, new diabetes. We curse it. Yes, we command it to go in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing. As I was with Moses, so God number two reassures us in We're not, we're only responsible for answering. That's right. Not performing. That's right. Come on, man. If, if the church would grasp a hold of that revelation. Right. We're responsible for answering. That's right. Not performing. We're not called to be performers. Of the gospel. Amen. We're called to make a difference and be world changers. And, you know, and that's an urgency that the Joshua's really got to do what the Moses had failed to do. Amen. It's a man. Walking into your inheritance. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon that I have given unto you as I said to Moses. Listen. Walking into your inheritance. <laughs> Chambach told the story of the building. Mm -hmm. His first building there in New Jersey. Uh, the man getting ready to sell his building, but that was, uh, he claimed that building He walked around the building, mm -hmm. and God gave him the building supernaturally. After three months, God provided supernaturally for him. But he said he couldn't find everybody to agree with him. He said, I, he said, my own regret, I didn't put footprints around. We want to teach you how to put footprints in areas that you're afraid mm -hmm. because you don't got the resources. You don't got the right connections. That's right. You know, I thought... Oh, I had to meet the biggest preachers, Amen. had to be on the biggest television networks, had to be on the biggest platform mm -hmm. to realize my true identity, and none of that. To finally realize, boy, that, born, that, that horse stable, oh, man. the woods, stale bread, That's right. the years of fasting, and I thought about it, I said, The third thing we want to teach to you is putting down footprints in areas that you're afraid of. Because the moment, you know, this was this is so powerful. That we called Arm Rooster up. Yep. And it was like a twelve thousand dollar tent. We had to raise some money up. I remember. He said, if you come here in Illinois, I'll give it to you for four thousand dollars. That's right. <laughs> brand new tent, brand new, it was forty. Right? He said, I can't believe you're here, Reverend. <laughs> I said, you gave me an $8,000 discount. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know? And uh, Leroy. You know, we love the tent ministry. There's something about tents, and we're going to be back in the tent soon again. But we're going to do it different. Mm -hmm. Because there's something you need to experience in tents, but different. and answer another call. It's time to put footprints in territories that you have fear over. Amen. You cannot advance if you don't put down such I can't sing it now or quote it for nothing. Uh, footprints in the sand. Footprints in the sand. You remember that I years do. ago? I do. I was saying the only one, one a pastor country said, I can't believe you quote remember Not carrying, you're not carrying you, he's carrying you. That's right. Set of footprints in the sand. You know, you're not alone, in other mm -hmm. words. But it's time to put footprints on new territory and claim. Wherever the soul your feet walk into, I'm going to give it to you. So, number one, this is how you put new footprints down. You got to believe even what you cannot see. Amen. better to step out and fail in order to sit home and not do anything. 
That's right. Because then you're not accomplishing nothing. That's absolutely right. I'd rather step out and fail. Years ago, he told me, he said, Tracy, I asked him, I said, you, you have many great spiritual sons, great ministries under you, over 14, 1,700 churches. I said, he said, Tracy, let me tell you something. He said, after I lost my wife, uh, I wrote a book called My Highest Calling. He said, in that... It's my obedience to God. This is so true. This is so true. He said, my obedience to God. My house calling is not what I have achieved. He teaches you how to bring realignment back to your focus in God. That's right. So when you put down new footprints, number one, you've got to believe in what you don't see. Because it can't, hurt, it can't carry your weight. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. It's not supposed to carry your weight. That's right. It's carrying his weight. Realize, if you fall off of it, you'll never reach the ground by yourself. Amen. He's going to. Without his hands there to pick you up. That's what do you believe true. in God for? We're standing by here at Kitchen Revival Global Studio, ready to pray with you. Pastor Mike. We're right now. Go ahead and call in right now. And uh, you could be the next one to pick up the phone there. God's going to give you a breakthrough in six weeks. Get ready. that lung cancer to go from Debbie from Bernie Tetz and we curse that cancer to go in the mighty name of Jesus we curse it we command the healing power of God to flow curse it be the demon of cancer Dawn in Pennsylvania marriage situation God's working it out Erica Ontario Canada uh, he was in our uh, ET uh, Elijah training center mm -hmm. uh, Erica uh, yeah I remember him God's going to move right now and get ready. Come you on. get ready to see a shift. Erica, you get ready to see shift, and God's going to give you the desire of your heart and bring somebody in your life that's going to make you happy and not make you sad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want somebody to make you sad. You want somebody to make you happy. This is true. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor, what you got there? Oh, Rhonda Goodley said that she is so appreciative of Cook Revival Ministry. I'd like to share some testimonies. On February 24th, right, of this year, this past year, up to today, Prophet Tracy was prophesying by live on Cook Revivals and said that by November of this year, God was going to give me three major testimonies. Testimony number one, our home insur homeowner's insurance company finally settled our hurricane claim in the amount of $170,000, unexpectedly. Testimony two, Almost lost my 84-year-old mother. She had diverticulosis and sometimes passes out during restroom breaks. She passed out, called the paramedics, and immediately the Lord brought her back to life. Wow. Testimony number three. Her husband had tested positive for COVID, right? Immediately prayed over him and put one of our prayer cloths on his body. He immediately was healed, and she never caught the COVID. And she said this was her bonus testimony. She had been praying to see her brother, whom she hadn't seen in 10 years, and miraculously, out of nowhere, he shows up on her doorstep. Now, you tell me he's not a big guy. Come on now. <laughs> what are you waiting for? What, a $170,000 unexpected money? Hallelujah. A brother? That's right. A mother? A husband? Miracles. Come on. The power of God is real. Hallelujah. You need to go to your phones, your one phone call away from the miracle Amen. and the healing hands of Jesus. Those nail scarred hands, yes. let them wrap around your body right now. God wants to give you a miracle. We're praying with you and praying for you. Why don't we take another call? Absolutely. Right now, God wants to give you a miracle. 
God bless you. Who am I talking with? I'm Cindy Wolfson. God bless you, Cindy. Where are you calling from, darling? Galleon, Ohio. Galleon, Ohio. Good. I love Ohio. Uh, we, we love the ministry there with Rob Parsley and them. So how are you doing? It's breakthrough for you. Okay. Are you with the pastor that, that's talking now? Yeah, this is Prophet Tracy. I'm with Pastor Mike. Okay, yeah, I want you to pray for me. I had a stroke and a brain aneurysm 18 years ago, and my right side of my body I can't use. I have a big brace on my leg. Well, that's believe. Huh? Go ahead. I, I have a right, 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 right oh, man. I have a right brace on my leg. Okay, take your time. It's fine. I, I can't use my arm or hand. I can't see on my bright eye. I can't use anything. I can walk. Let's yeah, believe God like for a miracle. Walk, but I have a big brain. Come on. Huh? Let's believe God right now for a miracle. Absolutely. Pastor Mike, myself, as God's prophets, we're going to, Father, in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus, yes, Lord. we command yes, this God. crippling disease. Hallelujah, in the name of we Jesus. We command new yes, memory. Lord. Every memory loss to be gone. Yes, we God. curse this affliction out of her body. Yes, Lord. God astonish the doctors. Give her a creative miracle. Hallelujah. We speak of her, Cindy. By your stripes, yes, she is God. healed. First Peter 2 24, by your stripes, she were healed. Hallelujah. By the Thank blood you, of Yeshua, we speak the healing power of God yes, to go Lord. there in Ohio and set her free and in deliver her Jesus. now in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus Christ yes, of Nazareth. We command miracles in her shoulder yes, God. movement. We command the stroke to be gone. Movement, muscle tissues, yes, Lord. Uh, mobility to come back to her. We speak life to her body Hallelujah. in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, we expect to hear a miracle from you. Continue to keep in touch okay. with the ministry and get ready for your miracle. Amen. I expect to hear great results. God bless you, darling. And, and, and now, now, is he preaching? Is he talking to me? Yes, Absolutely, darling. That, that word is for you, sweetheart. We're believing God for complete and total healing, all right? So we're expecting a testimony for what God's getting ready to do in your life, okay? Yeah, okay. God bless you. Yeah. You have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. You know, it's people that have afflictions. Absolutely. Pain. You know, one thing about it is it's easy to talk about miracles and healings, and that's got to do with footprints into our inheritance. That's right. But when somebody's in pain and, and, and somebody has never experienced forms of pains or whatever, mm -hmm. you really don't know what that person's walking through. Oh, absolutely. And it, it's easy to say, you know, uh, Lord, you know, uh, just do a simple prayer and whatever. Mm -hmm. But what you've got to realize is you can, the, the key to I learned in healing, how more people get so many miracles and healings, that's a key. And the Lord taught me this key 30 some years ago. He said, Tracy, it's not the type of prayer you pray. It could be the simplest of prayer, but it's got to be out of compassion. And there you go. That's the key. He said, Absolutely. it don't have to be a forceful prayer. My name can rebuke demons. Come on, man. That's right. But if it's not in operation of compassion, you know, sometimes people want to be forcefully praying over, you know. You remember We've this? Been, oh, God. <laughs> I know you what you're going to I'm probably going to get myself in trouble here. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember this one? And I know this is another story, everybody. I do. We were in a uh, we were in a revival, and this dear preacher, praise God. And I know. Listen, if you live south of the Bible Belt, you know exactly what I'm about to say. You have the old Pentecostal preachers. We had this one man of God <laughs> who had a hand that was probably now I've got a pretty decent sized hand. Right. His hand was at least twice as big as mine. All yeah. right. And he would walk around, hub up, hub. Jesus. Oh, boy. <laughs> and let me tell you something. Either God was going to fill you with the Holy Ghost or you were going to go out one or the other because when he laid that hand on your head, boy, it was you felt the power of God. Now, now, now that's, the, that's the thing. You felt the power of God in that burning sensation. But his hand was so big and heavy. Yeah, you felt <laughs> the power of God now. <laughs> I, I remember, yeah, I know where you're going to get next. Go ahead. Go ahead on. Finish your story. <laughs> I know where you're going. He was, he was in a service one night, and he got, he got, so, he got so happy in the spirit, he was walking around, going, Jesus, and was praying, and he went to go kick 
and he kicked his shoe right off, right through the church window. <laughs> that same preacher grabbed a hold of my head. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I said, Lord, my, my, my little neck is going to break. <laughs> But, you know, it, it's a simple thing, but it's operating compassion. That's the key. That is the key. Do you need to hear from heaven? Do you need a prophetic word? Prophet Mike and myself are standing Amen. by, Hallelujah. ready to prophesy. We're looking through the lens of this camera, Come on. and we're ready to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. Number three, we're teaching you out the book of Joshua chapter one, how to put footprints into territories that you're afraid to step out on. Because right. many times when you step out on a branch, you're not sure if it's going to carry you because uh -huh. you lean on your own weight, your own ingenuity, your own strength, your own ability. Mm -hmm. Well, if you ever step out, God's guarantee is going to be there for you. He said, every word your foot shall trot upon shall be yours for your inheritance. Come on, man. Imagine today what you can do when you network together. Oh, hallelujah. The fourth thing I want to talk about is networking together. That's right. Why do you think, and we've got... A lot of friends and partners of this ministry love this ministry. What is so valuable about, about networking? What do you think? Because I see networking like the power of agreement. Mm -hmm. I see networking that I don't have to be uh, like Moses, carrying everything by myself. That's right. But in Absolutely. networking also, too, I see a valuable part of networking that's beyond anything. It's, it's the fact that you have covenant agreement but when you network, you cover more territory. That's right. One could put 1,000 flight, two, 10,000 a flight. Mm -hmm. So why is networking so valuable today? And today, technology has intensified and increased. Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, 20 some years ago, we pioneered the first television broadcast in this area. We sure did. We That's honestly, we. Off of a gateway computer. A gateway computer. <laughs> Our first broadcast took us 12 hours to make. Oh, man, it was. Whew. 30 minutes broadcast. But you, we did. The impossible, what, essentially. The impossible. For, we for took that, a thousand dollar computer mm -hmm. and did what a network, a television network cost hundred thousands of dollars doing. Oh, absolutely. God gave us wisdom and knowledge. So. Tell, tell the audience, and this is going to help pastors, really, and ministers, mm -hmm. how valuable is networking? And then we're talking about networking for the next nine minutes, and I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to understand the next part of this network, of this ministry. So talk to us for the next several minutes mm -hmm. about networking. Oh, man. man. Why do you think connection, what does connection mean to you and how valuable and important it is for oh, people to understand a vision, write it down, make it plain so they can run with it. That's right. I mean, networking is so vital, especially in today's, in the body of Christ today. You know, you mentioned Prophet Charles Young. Yeah, you know how I feel about Charles yeah, Young. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. Oh. One of his famous sayings is, no man's an island and no man stands alone. And that's true. And, this, and that's absolutely true. You're not an island. And I think that's, that was the mentality of the previous generation of the yeah. church was this is my church, this is my body, and my group of people, so you don't associate with the church down the road. Man, we ain't in gangs. No, no. <laughs> you know, I saw a Facebook post one time where it said, man, you can go talk to somebody else from another church. We're not in gangs. <laughs> Why has it been like that? I, I don't understand it. It's like, uh, it, it's like some churches have become a cult. I thought we were all the body of Christ. You know, if you come and you want to visit uh, could survival visit. Absolutely. If you want to go and visit, ORU, go visit. visit. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's really ridiculous, you know. Pastors had taken the word proselytizing, right? And yeah. they have ran it to the extreme, to the point to where now they're afraid of losing their body that they have. But in right. reality, right, if you're doing what God called you to do, you're not losing, going to lose anybody. No, you're going to gain. You're going to gain. And you're that's gain. it. And that's the point. And that's why network is important. You know, when Moses, God gave Moses a strategy, separate everybody by companies of 50. That's right. Right. But he had to first trust leaders right. to put in place to govern that company of 50. Right. That's networking. And that's networking. That you is. Know, and that, that's what that's the basis of networking. Absolutely. You have to put in place people you to help you advance the calling that's on your life. You have to network with people that are around you Absolutely. to help advance the calling on your life. And the only way that you're going to get to the fulfillment of your calling, Matthew 18, 19, it's in the Bible about network. Right. For two or three, come on. Shall agree to See? network. That's networking. Yeah. Matthew 18, 19, I stand on, on a daily basis. 
you know, we won't say a prayer unless we're gathering hands. We, right. we, we, and it doesn't matter to me if I'm gathering hands with Prophet Tracy. It doesn't matter to me if I'm gathering hands with my wife or if I'm gathering hands with Joe down the road. We're going to come together in agreement and we're going to network and we're going to believe God for the miraculous. That's right. It's believing God. You know, this, uh, this is the fourth point in the here's in verse 17. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things. Look what he did. According as we have hearkened unto Moses in all things, so we will hearken unto thee. Only, Lord, thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. They had to come to a place of agreement in networking together. That's right. And the nation of Israel is telling Joshua, all right, we realize that Moses is no longer uh, physically with us. That's right. But he's instilling to you the principles how to unlock us to the next level. And as we listen to Moses, now we're going to listen to your leadership. Mm -hmm. Whatever God says to you. So we got to do this thing together. That's right. We got to network together. Absolutely. You know, when Simon Peter, uh, disciple, told all night and caught nothing, mm -hmm. it seemed like a waste of time. You can be skilled. Oh, yeah. You can be skilled in your profession and still not hit bullseye. Oh man, it, uh, absolutely. They were skilled as professional men. They knew the the, the weather. Mm -hmm. They knew the temperature. They knew they went fishing at night. Mm -hmm. Because the fisher would see the nets in daylight in Galilee. That's right. And scare the fishes off, so yeah. they did at night. Yep. And the Bible records that they taught, tossed, uh, tossed it back and all forth, told all night, caught nothing. Mm -hmm. Disappointed when morning light came, hung up the old worn out nets. That's right. But Jesus was viewing the far off and saw their disappointment in light of what they went through that night. Mm -hmm. Then he told Peter what is so profound. You're going to learn the principle of networking. Come on. He said, get back in your boats, get those nets, get them back on the boat, go to the right side, cast out your net. Now, what was Peter's mentality when Jesus first told him that? Lord, we've been out here all, all night and caught nothing. Long. Absolutely. It's like, don't you understand? Mm -hmm. This is what I do for a living. That's right. Nobody That's can better explain my living like I can. Man. Nobody can explain what I do better than what I do. Talk about he it. doesn't know the water. Well, he was the water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's Peter right. was looking at the water. That's exactly right. The water was speaking to him and said, cast your nets on the right side. He said, I've been out here all night, caught nothing. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me how to do my job. And that is part of the problem today. You know, and God was giving him a, a different job description. That's right. Yes, exactly that may be right. your profession. That may be your trade. But I'm getting ready to give you a new job description. Come on. You get ready to catch some men. Hallelujah. But I've got to change the way you think. That's right. Your approach towards life has to change. Absolutely. So he said, Lord, uh, I know what I'm doing. Caught nothing. I'm hanging out the nets. So he taught Peter over 6,000 above sea level. There in Sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. broad daylight, catching nets out. Had the mentality want to argue with his profession. His profession wanted to argue with the word and the water. Come on. But he was teaching them when God is ready for you to network, he'll open up the windows of heaven. That's right. And this is what he did with Peter and brought a networking. There were so many fishes when he let down the net, according to the word of the Lord, that there were other small ships around him. Peter had to scream out because the ship was sinking with the overflow. The overflow. That's right. That moment. Peter recognized networking Hallelujah. is how we get there. That's right. So we're going to give you an opportunity in the next three minutes how you can network with Cook's Revivals. But right now, let's take another phone call, and we got more our prayer requests coming in. Go to your phones right now. We're ready to prophesy to you. Turn in your prayer requests. Let us know where you're watching, what state, uh, what time zone, what country. We're ready to hear from you. We're praying. We're agreeing with you right now. You're one phone call away from a miracle. You're one praise away from the greatest happy in your life, Pastor Ruba, and the prayer warriors are standing by, ready to take your phone call. Absolutely. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and take this call. You know, and while we're, and while we're getting ready to get a phone call patched through, right now, if you're watching, you know, take a minute and hit that share button down there. If you're on, if you're on Facebook right now, every one of you just take two seconds. It doesn't take no time at all to hit right. that share button, and let's get the word of God out. Hit that share button, and if you're watching us on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell that you see right there in the corner and subscribe to the channel because this is the beginning of great things. I've seen such a great 
move of God that God's getting ready to do in the newness in this area, you know? It is. And we're getting ready to see some spectacular things, especially over the next three months. We really are. And we want to give you the opportunity to network with us in just Absolutely. A, a few minutes. Right after this call, we'll teach you how to, you can come together with us and we're going to continue praying. There's miracles get ready to happen. God bless you. Who am I talking to? Hello? You're live, darling, right now. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. What is your name and where are you calling from? Wow. Prophet Tracy. Yes, God bless you. <laughs> oh my God. I'm calling from Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. All the way from Nigeria. God Wonderful. bless you. Well, Prophet Mike and myself are here. I'm so glad I'm watching you live. Wonderful. Thank you, darling. You know, he, he's, he's a God of the miraculous and the God of the impossibilities. Amen. Hallelujah. What are you believing God for? Um, um, I just wanted to speak on speaking to my life. Absolutely. Concerning my finances, my business, my married life, and I just want you to speak into my week that the Lord should open a uh, good ball of opportunity concerning my finances. I've been experiencing ups and downs towards the end of uh, when I have a deep, when I have a transaction, but maybe everything just changes. So I just want you to speak into my life concerning my business and my spiritual life and my finances. Absolutely. Let's do that right now. Father, in the name of yes, Jesus, Lord. as we come into agreement with our dear sister all the way from Hallelujah. Nigeria, we think that there's no distance in prayer. We send the word of the Lord. Yes, God. We send the angel of God, Hebrews 1, 14, that minister angel, minister spirit on our behalf. Yes. And I hear the Lord saying, even in the next 30 days, you get ready to see God begin to move in your finances, yes. what's been owed from you, what was taken from yes. you. Even out of uh, there's some family situation, relatives that God's going to move on your behalf and bring you, deliverance to. And God said, everything in your life is get ready to shift your ministry, Hallelujah. even healing going through your Come body. On. We decree, and I hear the word of the Lord saying, watch a miracle take place in your finances. Yes, God. There's going to be an increase in business. And God said, get Amen. ready to take territories around your surrounding area. God said, watch. He's going to move on your behalf in the next 30 days. And that's Hallelujah. your prophetic word. God bless you. It's been an honor to serve you. We praise in him too. Get ready for your miracle. But God bless you. Amen. We love and appreciate you. God bless you, darling. Francis, you're getting a miracle right now. The mother has leukemia. We command that cancer to go and to die. Well, before we call any more prayer requests out, we want to give you an opportunity to come on board financially. This is our, our weekend, our telethon that we do we, once a month, mm -hmm. and we want you to, uh, as you have been doing, being our friends and partners of this ministry, uh, our telethon this week. And you know why? Because we have an opportunity to spend Elijah's training center. Come on. The last Elijah training center session, we didn't have no, no room here in this facility that we have. And, you know, we're not complaining. We're grateful for this facility at this season, but we have outgrown this facility. And we're going to tell you more about that right now and how you can come on board. Uh, tell them a little bit about the billing expansion, and then I'll tell them the rest of so this what is to do the, in the structures. Absolutely. So this is our transitional phase. We have the opportunity now to move into a larger facility. And this facility is approximately 10,000 square feet. It is separated into two sections. The first section will be the office section that will right. allow, allow us to put in all of our offices in place with all the phone lines, the prayer lines. But in the back side of that section is a larger section to be able to accommodate up to 300 students in the Elijah Training Center. And that I am so excited about because I know if you've ever been into the Elijah Training Center, the sitting is limited where we are currently. And, and the marker for a ministry that is, uh, for a ministry that is being blessed is growth. We, have, we are growing exponentially. We are. You know, we have had to turn away so many students from the Elijah Training Center that had wanted to come in, but we just simply didn't have the room. And this facility finally accommodates the ability to do just that. And that's just one section of the facility. 
The other section of the facility is a 7,000 square foot warehouse that we are going to turn into the revival center to where we can start having major revivals inside that center. Absolutely. You know, I, we're going to bring in, we have several named preachers that we want to bring in, you know, something in this area that has not been done. Absolutely. You know, in, in particular area that we're in right now in the eastern coast of North Carolina, you know, I don't know of any churches actually that have done what we got planned to do. No. And this facility allows us and accommodates us the, the expansion that we need to be able to actually, you know what, you want to see revival? You're getting ready to see revival. You will see revival. Oh, my gracious. You will see revival. So we, for the next uh, three minutes, we're going to give you an opportunity. So you said, Prophet, what should I say? Well, I'm just going to share my heart with you. You've mm -hmm. been knowing me from uh, uh, those that follow me all these years. There's two components, compassion, humility, integrity. So this is what I need from all my partners and friends. And I, I know that God can meet this need. We have to have $150,000 to sign this contract, the lease for the two years. Amen. We, only, we need $150,000 up front. And I know that some of you tonight, you say, well, what should I give? Let God speak to you. Let God talk to you. That's right. Help us Absolutely. get that $150,000. Come on. Now, God can use one person or he can use 150 people. That's right. Or he can use 15,000 people. That's right. Now, if you love this ministry, you want to be, it's going to enable me to teach five seasons. That, oh, absolutely. You know, we only talk two seasons of the Elijah Training Center. That's right. Third season, fourth season, and the fifth season is really developing that prophetic army. You know, and and let, me, let me break down how the seasons work the way that God had given the vision to Prophet Tracy. So season one, right, it begins your basics. You're dealing with learning the prophetic, how right. to serve, because you cannot operate in the prophetic if you first can't learn to serve. Absolutely. So it teaches you the basics of serving, and, and it allows you to touch your toes in the water right. of the prophetic, right. so to speak. Season two starts going into the gifts of the Spirit. Right. This is where we teach all nine gifts of the Spirit, right? what they are, what they represent, and how to operate in them. Absolutely. Season three takes that level and takes it further. Season three takes you to a place to where now not only are you learning about the gifts, but you're starting to learn how to operate in the gifts. Right. And you're starting to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord. And this, if you haven't seen an Elijah Training Center yet, you're, you're, I'm going to give you a little nugget. There's three voices that you're going to hear. You're going to hear the voice of God. Yep. You're going to hear your voice. And you're going to hear the voice of the enemy. That's right. The question is, is how do you decipher which one are you hearing? That's right. This is the, these, are, these little small nuggets are what we teach and train in the Elijah Training Center. Season four is where it starts getting really deep. It because does. in season four, we bring you up to start operating. And you start operating in the gifts. And we teach you the appropriate way to operate versus the inappropriate way to operate. Right. You know, we, we don't need any more parking lot profits. That's true, we don't. Because parking lot profits are of an abundance. And typically, if you're asking, well, you know, Pastor Mike, what's a parking lot profit? It's a profit who is just learning the gifts but don't have the confidence yet, so they'll pull you to the side and give you a word in secret. And there's no accountability to there's that no word. There's no accountability to you the word. You may wreck your whole life off of that prophecy outside that nobody heard but you and that prophet. That's right. So and nobody's accountable. And that's a parking lot prophet. And that's why it's so dangerous. It's not that you can't prophesy even where you go. You say, well, I don't believe in that. No, that's, that's, that that's, that's fine. But there's no accountability there. Let the word be established. There's no let the word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. That's right. So you want to be able to understand. And then tell them about the fifth season. Now, the fifth season is where you get, you know, if you've heard Prophet Tracy talk about the five levels of the anointing, this is, this is where you're going in the overhead. In the fifth season... You take everything you learn from the previous four seasons and you get to what is called the graduation season. This is where you learn to operate in the prophetic. You know how to hear the voice of the Lord versus your own personal voice or the voice of the enemy. You learn how to operate in the gifts of the spirit and you have been proven in that ability. So we bring you up in the fifth season. We'll blindfold you and then we'll put you before separate individuals that you have no idea who they are, and you're asked to prophesy. Upon receiving that, we then put you in front of Prophet Tracy and myself, and you lay hands on us and prophesy to us personally. And you'll receive a, a ring for graduation. Upon, upon graduating, you receive a Golden Eagle signet ring that's special just to the Elisha Training Center, saying that this is my sign that I have graduated. 
So we want to give you an opportunity right now. Go to your phone. So there's several ways you can give by Cash App, cash app PayPal, uh, mailing your check. So this is the instructions I feel led tonight because uh, that's a special anointing that's going to break you oh, free. Absolutely. Uh, as many that can do, yeah, $100, $1,000. Also, too, now listen, and this is not for everybody, but I, I know there's somebody watching right now that can do this. Everyone that's so at least a $10,000 love gift Amen. towards this $150,000 upfront payment on this building uh we we will fly you in because we still already got the ground that we already purchased for the building new sanctuary but you got to walk in phases amen you know you just don't can't build a ministry this big and not go in phases so we thank god that we're already purchased some land and then we're going to purchase some land in another area we'll be giving you updates on that as well but there's somebody watching you can do a one-time love gift of ten thousand dollars help us not that that one hundred fifty thousand dollars we mm -hmm. only have a few more days left to make agreement. Someone's That's already right. come behind us and uh, under, under bid as well. So we want to be able to say, all right, this is where we can make the difference. This is where we can have conferences, revivals, a real move of God, teach and train you prophetically without having new limits. There won't be new limits, no you limits. know. We'll be able to hold a thousand students. That's right. Absolutely. At one time and teach you prophetically. So you say, Prophet, what should I do? We're going to ask the Lord to speak to you. He may be telling you, say, you know what? I want you to sow a thousand. I want you to sow a hundred dollars. I want you to sow two twenty-two. Uh, God's been giving me that number a lot in my revival, two twenty-two, and I've seen miracles behind it. Amen. And listen, you're not buying a prophecy, you're not buying a miracle, you're not buying a healing, but you're helping us financially. Now let the Lord speak to you in the next two minutes. Why is it important for you to understand? When you come on board and help a ministry like this and take out that big chunk of $150,000, do you know what God does? He expedites. He moves suddenly on come your on knees. Now. That's right. He'll move your business forward. That's absolutely right. He will move your business forward. Marcia really laid hands on me when I was six months into a young prophet. I didn't know who he was. He laid hands on me. Uh, he said, the financial mantle that's on my life, double portion to come in your life. And I have seen miracle money. I have seen people get breakthrough financially. Amen. Even in Virginia, just last week, people were getting financial miracles, Man. financial turnaround. I'm talking about money was coming. Come on. You know, God don't mind you having money, long money don't have you. That's so right. go to your phones right now and say, Prophet, I can't give a thousand, but I can give two twenty two. Just let the Lord I'm just calling these numbers out randomly. Does he not tell me each amount not tonight? He's just telling me to open my heart up to you. That's right. Tell you what I need. I need as many as our friends and partners help me raise $150,000 up this weekend telethon as we praying with you, praying for you, speaking into your life. We appreciate what you've already done, but this is a time that we got to meet quickly and fast and get this building up and running within the summer. It will be tremendous. That's right, and that's the thing. You know? and, that, and that's what we're asking tonight. You know, help us create a revival center. Right. And a, and a school to be able to train the body of Christ Absolutely. for this last move of God. Absolutely. And that's what this is about. This isn't money to go for anything else other than this building. We, we want to be able to purchase this building. Right. So that way we can start and expand the school greater than it's ever been. And, that's and right. you know, it's about anybody can get up there and say, well, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and everything. Right. This, you want, to, you want to bless the body of Christ? and you want to do something for the kingdom of God, help with this building. Absolutely. Now, if you sell at least $1,000, uh, send you a new book and a prayer club, a prayer straw that we signed on there. You're not uh, buying. This is just a way of saying thank you to you for helping us knock out this $150,000. Mm -hmm. So, again, uh, we'll send you a, a signed copy of the book, also a prayer straw signed, prayed over. Mm -hmm. I pray in them. I pray in Psych Club. And I would love for you to come on board and help us touch the world. Absolutely. You can visit the center. If you at least sell the $10,000 or more, you'll have private time with us around the round table. You can ask any question. We'll teach to you. Just as a way of saying thank you of sowing that large seed because we know it's a sacrifice to do that. Absolutely. I mean, listen, everything we, we do daily is a sacrifice for this ministry. Amen. So we understand it. But if you're sowing at least $10,000 that quickly help us not just earn $50,000 out, uh, we'll bring you in, fly you in, have a personal round table just like this, one-on-one, -on -one, and minister to you. You say, are you charging for that? No, that's to help the billing project. That's right. But it's my way of saying thank you. 30 years of experience that God taught me, I can pull within you in a few hours. Amen. You know, if I can have 10 more minutes with Shambach, I give $100,000. That's right. <laughs> 10 minutes with him. 
Amen. So you don't, you don't understand the value of the anointing somebody experienced until they're gone. Then you realize, wow, I was at the table. But you don't realize life comes so short, That's right. so fast. So go to your phones right now. Help partners, help network. That was four point of this message from the book of Joshua. Help us network. Help Pastor Mike and myself carry this message around the world. I even got a call again from Impact. They're ready to, ready to, to move forward. They're ready to move on that contract. So listen, it's not that we, we don't have great doors and great opportunity, but we need network and partners. But Amen. first and foremost, we've got to have a bigger building because there are five seasons of the Elijah Training Center that I know God has called us to equip Hallelujah. the prophetic army. And listen, you're going to love being in it. You're going to love, and they're going to be prophetic uh, classes all week, just not on a special occasion each month. It's going to be prophetic classes all Amen. week long. So you'll be able to ride down, meet us personally, sit with us personally, be taught. Uh, Prophet Mike is going to be one of the teachers as well as myself. Amen. I'm talking about not just one weekend a month. Mm -hmm. That's the Elijah Training Center, but we're going to have a prophetic school going all week. Oh, absolutely. So you don't want to miss being trained in the prophetic. So talk to the Lord. See what the Lord would have you to give. Now, if you want to write that whole check out, $150,000, praise the Lord. Amen. If you're able to do that, that will move a burden off of our shoulders. Amen. And I know God will blow your socks. I know he will move in your life. Absolutely. You know, I've seen crazy faith move God. Mm -hmm. So right now for the next two minutes, and then we're going to call some names out and start praying. We're going to answer more phone calls and speak into your life prophetically. So tell them several ways they can give. So you can actually go to cookrevivals.org backslash give, and you can give through that portal there. You can go on Cash App. Dollar sign Cook Revivals. You can go to paypal.me backslash Cook Revival. Or you can add, send a check in the mail. 124 Market Street, Newburn, North Carolina, 28560. And you know, when we ask you to get, I, I'm asking you to give, you know, along with Prophet Tracy, out of your heart. That's right. Speak, ask God to speak to you. That's right. Ask God to speak to your heart about how you can come on board and help move this vision forward right. with this building. Absolutely. Because this building... You know, this building is going to, I know that I know that I know it's going to touch so many lives. Untold you know, multitudes. And you, you know. mentioned about some of the other classes. We, we're, we're planning classes on dream interpretation. We're play, planning classes, and I, everybody has been asking for this class, and we are currently building it right now on how to do the power to cast out demons, yep. how to do exorcism, yep. how to make demons flee what to do about witchcraft and how to bind up the spirit of witchcraft. We're going to be talking about that. You don't want to miss that. we got so many things planned, right. but we are asking you as our partners, as our family, to come on board with us and help us push this vision forward. And doing that, you're, not, you're investing into people's lives. And that's it. You're and you're investing, investing into your future. That's exactly right. People don't realize this. Brother Shambach taught me this. When you sow into a ministry project, this is what we call our Nehemiah project, he taught me that when you sow into a project that God has called that leader to do and you come on board, he prepares your future. That's right. Absolutely. That seed goes into your future. Mm -hmm. And when you arrive and need a miracle, that's a seed opportunity. That's the law of planting and harvest. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you, know, you know, and that's, you, you're sowing into your absolutely. future. Absolutely. So go right now and pick up your phones. You can do it several ways. If you're one of those that's sowing at least $1,000 or more, a free book and a prayer shawl that we both have signed. Send it out to you as fast, as quickly as possible. And if you're giving a one-time love gift of $10,000 to help us cover that $150,000 quickly so we can sign this contract to advance this ministry, the School of the Prophets. And listen, God may be telling you to do something bigger than I'm just giving you random, uh, That's you it. know, Don't but from your heart. There's no pressure, no, no pulling. No. No pressure, no pulling. Because I know that I know that I know that it, God will make a way. God always makes always a way. Always makes a way. So be that Peter that throws that net on the right side. A miracle happened at an odd time. Amen. And all those little ships around you, everybody can get a blessing because of your obedience. So go right now before we pray over your offering. We'll take this next minutes. And ask the Lord what he will have you to give. If you are a successful businessman and you, you, you want a tax write-off, you can sow that amount or that whole lump sum. We'll be glad to give you a tax, tax write-off as well. Amen? Absolutely. So listen, it's opportunity time. Amen. But come on board because that's a burden for the prophetic. Absolutely. You know, it's like one thing, we, one thing that we definitely believe in is family. 
We believe oh, in man, family. We believe we do. in family. God didn't and ask me to raise a team. He asked me to raise a family. Absolutely. And I'm looking at the camera right now, and every one of you out there to us are honestly family. That's right. And we're so grateful and appreciative to have you guys in our lives. Absolutely. You, you, you're saying, oh, I'm grateful and appreciative to have you guys teach us. You know, right. no, we're right. the ones who's grateful. I can promise you. We are grateful to we have grateful. you in our lives. And it's one thing I always say. If we go through the valley together, baby, we're going to go to the mountaintop together. We're going to, if we go through the valley together, we're going to the mountaintop. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. So take this opportunity right now and give and let the Lord bless you because he's going to do that. And know it's a privilege and an honor because I know this ministry has the heart of God. Amen. And I also knew there's so many testimonies of healings and miracles and financial breakthrough. That's nothing impossible with God. Well, let's pray over there at Finances, Hallelujah. right? Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone yes, under sound of my voice, yes, regardless of what amount of seed they gave, we break the powers of Satan. Hallelujah. We break the financial difficulty. We release financial miracles in into their lives. Jesus. We ask God that you open the heavens. And everyone that gave, God, you're going to move in these next 30 yes, days, God. and you're going to prove this word of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the next 30 days, you're going to shatter the plans of the enemy. And my, things are being held up. Properties being held up. Court Thank cases. You, Finances have been robbed in 30 days. It's going to be a shift to everyone that sows into this $150,000 glory, glory, glory. right now Thank in the God. mighty name Hallelujah. of Jesus. There's going to be a 30 day breakthrough that yes, takes Lord. place in Jesus' mighty I name. The glory of God. I do. I felt the anointing <laughs> of God. Everyone that sows into the next 30 Hallelujah. days, God's going to give you a financial breakthrough. Yes, Lord. Now, Francis, uh, we're believing for you. The Latina from your mother, we curse it. Robert, Ministry, the prophetic word, God said, get up and believe in Elizabeth from North Carolina. We're praying for you uh, live right now. Father, we pray for her. She's hungry for the prophetic shift and move her in life. Jonathan from Virginia, church and law, attended revival there in Virginia Beach. God bless you, Jonathan. I remember you. God's going to give you a miracle. I ask God that you secure and move on their behalf quickly and swiftly in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. You know, there's miracles taking place. And as you continue giving, continue turning your prayer requests, and listen, we love you. Now, God taught us four things about the life of Joshua. Mm -hmm. In the life of Joshua, how to go further than what Moses did not explore into and how to network, how to believe God together. And again, the book now you can order on Country Revival. Go to Amazon. You can order it. Mm -hmm. Go to CountryRevival.org. Let's take one more call. Oh, absolutely. And then we're going to pray with you, and then we're going to let you know. Tomorrow night, Saturday at 7 p.m., we're going to be back live. You do not want to miss tomorrow night. It's called Prophetic Perspective. Hallelujah. What is God saying about America Amen. and the world? You don't want to miss that special episode live All around absolutely. the world. It's going Could to be it? a special time, and I can't wait. You know, I, can't I cannot even wait. Let's pray for one more person on the phone. Absolutely. If you want to call in and, and have prayer, it's 833-917-2799. That's 833-917-2799. Let me see if I can patch this call through. If you need special prayer, call right now. God has a miracle Hallelujah. with your name on it. And again, if you're there and you and you, you if you want to email us your prayer request as well, you can email your prayer request to prayer at cookrevivals.com. Dot org. That's nothing impossible with God. God bless you. Who am I talking to? It's Jessica from London. Jessica from London. God bless you. Well, I know God's going to give you the miracle because you're the last phone call. <laughs> and then we're going to do more. T you, you, God's going to give you double for your trouble. Double for your trouble. What do you believe in God for? What, you, what do you need God to do, Jessica? I'm praying for for um, a miracle for me to get a resident permit or visa mm -hmm. okay. um, and, and to finish my PhD. Hallelujah. Well, that's believe God. That's, that that, that, that sounds like some good goals. Yes. And uh, for marital breakfast as well. And uh, my, my, my mom has, is suffering from hernia and I'm praying for God to heal her, and also my 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 sister is um, they want to do a hip 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 replacement, mm -hmm. and she's really young. Yeah, so I'm praying for um, healing for for both of them. 
Well, let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we yes, pray God. for us, Jessica and there in London. Hallelujah. We know there's no distance in prayer. We send the word of God. We command healing yes, and manifest in her loved ones, her prayer requests. Thank you, Lord. And I hear the Lord saying in the next six months, get ready for changes to occur in your life. Hallelujah. Even your lower part, part of your back, I can see your skeleton form that God's touching around your lower disc area and your back, the discomfort. God told me to tell you that he's going to move it on your body as well as your family. And God said, this yes, is God. a time like never before for you to know that he's moving. There's nothing impossible with God. The anointing, that breakthrough is taking Hallelujah. place. God has a miracle with your name on it. We yes, speak God. all the way from here to London. There's no distance in prayer. We send the angel. Yes, we expect God. miracles take place. Hallelujah. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. A miracle is on its way. God bless you, Jessica. We love you and appreciate you. Bless you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Even after we go off the air tonight, we're going to be here at the prayer center for the uh, 10 minutes afterwards, so you can continue calling your prayer requests. And tomorrow night, 7 p.m., 7, 7 p.m. Uh, Absolutely. That's a miracle breakthrough. Now, what is this? I, I got to give one more testimony go before ahead, we sir. go off. Catherine Stokes called in a few minutes ago, and this is just the back. You were saying 222, 222. She says she sewed the 222. And she remembered what you were talking about the, uh, with Kat, with Charles Young and about the 13th. Right. All right? Yes. If this is the 13th. Yep. She gave the 222 and got back 30,000 fold. Wow. So you do the math. 222 times 30,000. There's nothing impossible there with God. There is nothing impossible with God. Remember, help us reach out $150,000 so you can be the next one that testifies. And that's from my heart. We love and appreciate you. Before we go off the air, remember, you don't got no troubles. Hey, All you, you need, need is faith in God. This is Pastor Mike and Prophet Tracy telling you we love you. On behalf of Pastor Ruben and the Country Revival's family and our partners around the world, join us tomorrow night in Prophetic mm -hmm. Perspective. What's going to happen next in America? What is God saying to the prophetic house here and how the world is getting ready to be changed and affected in 12 months from today? Come on. That's a message for you. Tomorrow night live here at 7 p.m. Don't miss your opportunity. You have a date with a miracle. God bless you. God bless you.